Hey and welcome to my channel, I am Valerie and today we are going to learn how to add a gentle 3D movement to a 2D picture. There are a lot of AI tools that can do this but most of them are not free and you won't have the same level of control as you would if you create it from scratch in After Effects. So with that said let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so in our case, we will use this beautiful picture of a lion that I found on Freepik. I think it's an AI generated one, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that to get the most of the effect, uh, try to use a close up a portrait picture, such as a close up of her face or uh, some object. Once we have uh, the photo, we need to create a depth map of it. This map will allow us to tell After Effects what parts we want to be close to or distance from the camera. This will help us to create the 3D motion and decide which parts in the picture will be focused and which are blurry. Luckily for us, this function is available in the latest version of Photoshop. If you do not have Photoshop, you can find many free websites that can generate a depth map for your picture. I'll leave some in the descriptions. In my case, I'll open this picture in Photoshop and show you how to do it. Alright, so once we're in Photoshop, we need to go to Filter and enter Neural Filters. Now we need to activate the Depth Blur Filter. If you do it for the first time, you will see this message. Just click on download to activate it. Alright, so now let's scroll down and make sure to uncheck the focus subject and do check the output depth map only. And here is our map. Soon we will use this black, gray and white information to create a cool 3D effect in After Effects. Alright, so let's click OK and rename the layers. We can call this one original and this one map. Finally, let's save this file. Make sure it's a PSD file and hit save. Now let's jump into After Effects and create the first composition. Let's make it a vertical format, set the duration to 10 and change the name to Mastercom. Now let's double click in the project panel to bring the PSD file to After Effects. Choose to import it as a composition with the retain layer size option. Great, and now let's enter the PSD file precomp. Here we can see our two layers from Photoshop. First, we need to precompose the map layer. We can adjust the name and make sure to choose this option. Now we can turn off this precomp and start creating the 3D illusion in this scene. For this, we need to add the displacement map effect to the original picture layer. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it better. And now let's make this effect use the data from what we have in the map precomp. We can select to use the effects and mask in this precomp, then change the horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance, which basically means that we're telling the effect to look at the black, gray and white data that we have inside the map comp. So now when we change these parameters, we will get a weird 3D movement in this scene. As you can see, there are many areas where the picture looks cropped. That's happening because our map is too contrasty. To fix this, all we need to do is soften this map using a fast box blur effect. Our goal is to make these colors in this map look like gradients and not like solid colors. Using the blurriness, we can get this look. So now when we go back to the picture comp, we will see that the problematic areas are blended together in a much smoother way. So after adjusting the map, we can further improve our scene by adding a camera lens blur effect. And now to make this effect use the data from the map comp, we need to select it in the layer property. Let's make it use the mask and effects from the comp as well. 
So now when we crank the blur up, we will get some areas blurry than others. But the problem is that we get the face a bit blurry too. To fix this, we need to adjust the contrast of our map. We need to make this area very dark because all the dark areas are in less focus and the bright areas are the most blurry. That's how the lens blur effect reads this information. So to make it, we can use the curves effect. Let's adjust it so we can make the darker areas more darker. Then we can add the levels effect to make a bigger contrast between the dark and the bright colors. Keep playing around with the effects we have on this map because each photo needs a bit of a different adjustment. And now as you can see the face looks much more focused. But if you can't get the right area to be dark using the color correction effects we added, you can cheat a little bit and create a black shape in the picture in the area you want it to be in focus. Then add the fast box blur effect to the shape to make it look like a gradient, to soften the edges and to make it blend with the map. This way we can get even better results for the blurriness and the 3D movement. So now let's animate this scene. In my case I will only animate in the vertical direction. So I'll set this value to 30, create a keyframe and then move on to let's say the second 5 and change the value to minus 30. I think the movement is looking good and now before moving on I want to add a white solid so the blurry edges will look bright and not dark. Ok, so now let's go to the master comp and bring the picture comp to it. To add a bit more movement to the scene, we can create a slight scale down animation. So I'll create the first keyframe with the value of 110 and then move on to the end of the animation which is the second 5 and bring the scale to 100. Let's see how that looks all together. We can lower the quality of the preview to see it uh, much quicker. Alright, I think it looks awesome. Now let's finish by improving the look even more. So first we can add the hue and saturation effect to this pre-comp to make it in a black and white picture. Next let's add the levels effect to create some contrast. Now I want to make the blurry parts even more blurry. For this all I need to do is to go uh, to this precomp, select the picture and scale the blur radius. Looks awesome. Now let's go back to the master comp and add the curse effect to improve the look a bit more. Finally if you want to make the scene look uh, like a super high resolution picture and make the areas in focus look even sharper, you can add the sharpen effect and adjust the amount to fit your needs. As you can see the focused areas looks very sharp now. So with that done we have finished the tutorial, I hope you find this one helpful, see you in the next one.